let's see if we can get this set review under an hour. Hey Garfathers, welcome back to another set review and this time we're gonna dive straight into Crystal Melody and usually there are multiple clans per set so I have multiple set review videos but as seen as it's Bermuda Triangle it's once again only one clan for one set so this is a long one so I want to go rapid fire through all these cards as fast as possible luckily a lot of these cards are very self-explanatory and are very one dimensional because it's split up in multiple archetypes so we're gonna go rapid fire through each and every single card uh, give immediately my rating and maybe say one or two things and that's about anything so we can keep this video as short as possible because otherwise we will be here for two hours or something so without further ado let's jump right into these cards and we start off with the generic card support that every new clan gets or every clan gets when a new wave support hits and that's of course reprint triggers the only upset about, about these reprints are that there are new artworks and i hope they're gonna do this more often with future reprints but as far as we see with the upcoming sets it's that's not the case but hopefully with the trial decks for try free they will do that so fingers crossed so they're gonna be two stars because they're just reprints but with the added artworks I think that gets them one extra stars. But with that, they got their third crit trigger, and that is Ducking Shooter Pella. And it's gonna get three stars as it opens up more deck design options within the trigger lineup, as they now can run three different crits. But with that, they also got the reprint of their old starter, and it's gonna be one star as it's just a reprint, but she got a different artwork, so that's nice, but it's not the same thing with triggers as usually they could just give different starters which in itself is a different artwork which they did got in this set as they also got bermuda triangle cadet riviere and it's gonna be three stars for me on this one as yes it's just a generic starter but it does have some synergies with the riviere right chain so that's why i'm gonna give it the generic three star line as it synergizes with that same as for the next starter that is angelic star coral same as with Riviere, it's going to be free stars as it synergizes with the Coral Right Chain. So it, there is a reason to run this as a starter besides the generic starters that we already have. Now from that we go right into the new vanilla cards and they got this great one which is basically Aqua. Which is mid vocal Enioneer and Enioneer is just a 15k shield 7k grade 1 vanilla. I'm only going to give it 1 star as I'm not really super fan of these vanillas. Same as with Ruby Sensation Laces, this is a 10k 10k vanilla is going to be one star as we already have two of these and this is the third one from Bermuda Triangle the reason why we have so many is basically for the Highlander build but besides that yeah nah I'm not feeling it then the final of these generic everybody gets these card support is their grade one drop drop pg that is intact parasol ennis and it's going to be three stars for this one as it just it's like all the other ones it opens up deck designing as you can now facilitate the extra crits or other triggers than just the generic 484 lineup. Now the first archetype that we're going to dive in is the new Pacifica archetype and we start off with the main VR, the grade 3, that is top idol Pacifica and her ability is act on finger circle once per turn, cost soulless one and activate all of the effects below according to the number of your rear guards with Pacifica in their card names. One or more this unit gets power plus 10k, drive plus 1 until the end of turn. Two or more, you get two imaginary gift 4s. Three or more, until the end of turn, when your opponent would call cards from his overhand to the guardian circle, he or she must call three or more at the same time. So if you have this at your finger, you have one extra on the copy on the field, it is basically a 23k triple drive finger, so almost a pseudo stride like powerhouse. Then. If you have two rear guards, you can get two imaginary gift force on top of the already one that you're going to get when riding. So you can potentially get three force markers in one single turn, which basically states that you want to play this with force one. And then the final one, if you have all copies onto the board, they all have super battle lore guard restrict, which is super annoying, especially with the high power and the things that you're going to steamroll out of control, which makes this a very scary card. Overall, I'm going to give it five stars as this is a very solid effect in itself. It costs a soul, meaning you cannot be damaged tonight. 
And this whole thing works only with four copies of herself, so it's very splashable in any type of archetype or any deck that has four slots open where you can put in four extra grade threes, which is nice. And you're going to see that in future videos that it's actually pretty easy to attain that. So it's pretty good. The only downside is that it's, you need to have all the other, other copies onto the board. But luckily for us, as we're going to dive into the support cards, it's very easy to get those cards onto the board, or at least in your hands. So let's dive into the support card for Pacifica. As her main grade 3 supporter card is Refined Poiser Ursula. And Ursula's ability is Otto Wenger to Rigger Circle. When placed, cost counter plus 1, search for up to 1 top idol Pacifica from your deck and drop zone, reveal it, and put it into your hand. And if you search your deck, shuffle your deck. Basically, did this on place, fetch one Pacifica from either your deck or your drop zone and get it to hand. So you trade this great free on place for encounter bless into another Pacifica, which is really nice as it outright filters one from deck. And if you're up against a control, yeah, well, you can just fetch it back from the drop zone and put it back onto the field, which is super nice. And for that, I'm going to give it four stars as it is one of the best ways to get Pacifica to the field or at least to your hand as you can outright just grab it from your deck or just reoccurs it from the field from the drop zone, which is pretty nice. Then another support card is this grade 2 crowning partner Avain. And Avain's ability is auto finger the Rigged Circle. When placed, put up to one face-up top idol Pacifica, each from your drop zone and damage zone into your hand. And if you put from your damage zone, put the top card of your deck into the damage zone, this ability may only be used by this card with the same card name once a turn. So this card can basically fetch you a Pacifica from the damage zone and the drop zone, which is pretty good. And together with the grade 3 means no matter where your Pacificas are, you're going to get them. And this can fetch you two, as it states, put up to one face up from each your damage zone and drop zone, which means you can get them both. And that for no cost is pretty good. And for that, I'm going to give it four stars as it's one of the better support cards for Pacifica out there, which makes this a very good addition to make Pacifica as an own reliable engine very consistent. Then another very interesting support grade two is Flustered Idol Freta. And her ability is other one record circle when placed, di cost, discard a card from your hand, draw a card, and then another cost, count them as one, and return a top idol Pacifica from your top zone to your hand. So basically, in the generic sense, this is an unplace cycle effect. But then on top of that, you can pay another counter blast and then return a Pacifica to hand. Which, just like the grade 2 or the grade 3, can give you more recursion to your Pacifica cards, which is nice. But what's interesting about this grade 2, if you open up multiple Pacificas in hand, this card can actually turn into a direct plus. As you can place her onto the board, discard the Pacifica, draw a card, then counters one, and then fetch the Pacifica back to hand. And there you plussed. So this gives the card a little bit more flexibility in the way that you can use it, but in overall terms, it doesn't really help you further than just digging through your deck for your Pacifica, than outright just fetching it when you need it, unlike that you need to pay a counter, but it's just like the Great Free. Only the Great Free has the upside that it also can just direct fetch one from deck. So for that, I'm only going to give this one three stars, as it's a bit worse than the other two cards that we just talked about. Then another Pacifica support card is this Great One, Lavender Missy Lepro, and her ability is Auto Rearguard Circle. At the end of the battle, it boosted a rearguard, cost Count up as one and return this unit to your hand. Look at the seven cards from the top of your deck, reveal up to one top idol Pacifica from among them and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. So this one costs you counter blast, but you're not guaranteed to get a Pacifica to hand. However, this card allows you to be a bit more aggressive in the early game, dump it on the board and then make room by getting it back to hand and then that spot can then be filled with the Pacifica. You potentially get to uh, get the fetch so it has some synergies in that respect also it's a nice card that helps you with more shield value as you can put it onto the board use ability and bounce it back and then you can use it to guard with when you don't need it anymore so it has flexible use in that regard so for that i'm gonna give it three stars as it is a nice support card less consistent than the other cards but then again checking top seven if it's if you don't have any pacificas revealed just yet then there is a high consistency rate to it that you can use it. So it depends on how you activate it, when you activate, basically know when to use it to get the maximum value out of it. Then the final Pacifica support card, and this could be one of the best one among them, is this great one, Topping Mascot Serio. And her ability is Auto Vanguard to Rigger Circle. 
When placed, cast Countless One, look at the seven cards from the top of your deck, reveal up to one top idol Pacifica and a Revine Poiser Ursula, each from among them, and put them into your hand, and shuffle your deck. If you and your opponent's vanguards are grade one, you may pay sold as one for this cost. So there are two things about this effect. First off, it's an excellent going second card, as when you ride it while your opponent is already grade one, you can then just resolve it even though you have no counter blast because you can then pay the soul blast which makes this card pretty versatile in different scenarios also if you have some way to get one extra soul and there is some strange way to do that then you can call another copy and then use its effect once again but what's also nice about this is that just like lepro it checks top seven but you now also look for the support grade three which can also just fe outright fetch you a pacifica so there's more things you can fetch and you can directly get two cards from it which makes this a pretty good search card so for that i'm gonna give it four stars as it has a lot more value a lot more consistency to it and it has some nice going second interactions now with the pacifica cards out of the way let's dive into the new coral archetype which is one of my favorites of this set and we start off with the new vr great free coral aurora star coral and her abilities are Contains of Vanguard Circle. If you Soul Blast a total of four cards or more this turn, the original critical of all your units with Coral in their card name becomes two. So this basically is the same effect that we have with Force 2, meaning you cannot combine this with Force 2. So if you're playing Coral, you're gonna go for Force 1, otherwise this effect or just Force 2 markers won't do anything for your field. So it's gonna be a lot of power with a lot of crits. But then we got the second ability, and that's Act on Vanguard Circle once per turn, cost Countless 1, Sold less 2, and return a normal unit, each from your rearguard circle and drop zone, to your hand. If you return a card with Coral in its card name, this unit gets power plus 15k until the end of turn. So now we have Reoccursion and we can reuse on place effects because we can bounce units back from the field, call them again, or we can just let them die or intercept with them and then just call them back up. And it's very easy to get a Coral in one of those two cards because either you have called something to the field or it's in your drop zone. And even if it's not in your drop zone, you can Soul Blast it and then fetch it back. So getting the plus 15k on your Vanguard is pretty consistently easy to do. And also, you already paid now two Soul. So you only need to sold as two more, which, spoiler alert, is pretty easy to do with your support cards. You then already can achieve the extra crit even on your Vanguard. You get a reoccursion, reuse of on-place effects, a lot of buttload of power and crits. Yeah, this is a five-star card. This is pretty good as it can just force out a lot of pressure and with all those free extra crits, that's pretty nice. Then the main support card for Coral is the Grade 2 Coral that is Shiny Star Coral and her abilities are Auto Vanguard the Rigor Circle, when placed, Soul Charge 1 and if you have a Vanguard with Coral on this card name, Soul Charge 1. So either you Soul Charge 1 or you Soul Charge 2 and if you write her herself, you get two Soul Charge because she of course is a Coral. So this supports the whole need to Soul Blast a lot of cards, so it's a good resource too. But then we got the second ability which helps with achieving the Soul Blast 4, that is act on the rearguard circle once per turn, cost Soul Blast 2, and this unit gets power plus 10k until the end of turn. If you have a Vanguard with Coral's card name, this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of turn. So in the Coral deck, that's Soul Blast 2 plus 15. So just like the Coral Grade 3, you can make this an immense powerhouse and then also give it crits. And it helps you with the resources that you need for your crits. And because it's a solid rearguard skill, you can bounce it back with Coral and then place it again and soldiers two cards again. So it helps you with your whole resource thing to keep getting more souls so you can soul less them. So yeah, this is for me a solid 5 star card. It is an essential tool for the Coral deck and it makes good use of the grade 3 Coral's abilities. But then we also got a grade 1 version of Coral, and that is Fresh Star Coral, and her abilities are Auto and Vanguard Circle. When placed, if your soul has a card with Coral in its card name, aka the starter, draw a card and put a card from your hand into the soul. So it's basically a cycle, but instead of discarding, you put something in the soul. Which is nice as it fuels your soul blessing skills, but overall not as great as other effects, as it's not a direct plus that makes it somewhat Eh. But then we got the second ability, and that's where you're gonna play it mainly for as Auto and Burger Circle. When placed, Soul Charge 1. If you have a Vanguard with Coron's card name, Soul Charge 1. 
and this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of the turn. So in any deck, it's an unplayed soul charge. In a coral deck, it's an unplayed soul charge too, and it becomes a 13k booster or attacker. And that's nice because it can potentially get the crit with the coral grade 3. So we got once again another coral that interacts pretty good, pretty well with the grade 3. Not as greatly universal usable as the grade 2, but overall I think it's a solid 3 star card as it helps the Coral engine to do what it needs to do. Then for the support cast for Coral, we got this grade 3 that is Glaring Moon Mira. And Mira's abilities are unknown Vanguard Circle, when placed, cost Countless 1, search your deck for up to 1 Aurora Star Coral, reveal it and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. So just like the support card for Pacifica, this one just outright fetches you your Coral. The only downside is that it only works on Vanguard Circle, but at the same time it meant it means that once you miss right, you know you can rewrite into Coral next turn 100% of the time. So it does fixes that issue. But you mainly use this card for its second ability. And as continues a Vanguard Circle, during the battle your Aurora Star Coral attacked, your opponent can only call Great Zero cards from hand. So this card has basically the Gardener's Trigger, your opponent can only use triggers. So it negates Protect Markers and they can only rely on Great Zero draw PGs if they want to use PGs, which they need with all the high power columns. Sadly, this only works with the Grade 3 Coral and not with the Grade 2 and the Grade 1, so it's somewhat limited and you need to have multiple Coral Grade 3s to get the most value out of this effect. So overall, I'm going to give it 3 stars as it is a nice support card, but it's not as diversely useful like the other supports that we've seen for the Pacifica build as it has some serious limitations. Then for the Grade 2 support card for Coral, we got Charming Make Piao Ling. And Piao Ling has also guard restrict ability as her ability is on record circle when placed if you have a Vanguard with Coral in its card name, cost, count plus one, and until the end of turn, when your opponent would call cards from the hand to the Guardian Circle, he or she must call two or more at the same time. So this is basically the Battle Dora effect for all your Corals the moment you place it. That is pretty good as you have a lot of Coral cards and this will be widely used on all your Corals, unlike the Great Free that only works with your Great Free uh, Aurora Star Coral. And the fact that it only is on place and costs counterblast is no big issue for Coral as you can bounce it back and use it again. And besides the Great Free Aurora Star Coral, not a lot of cards are going to actively use counterblast. So for that I think it's a solid 3 star card as it's not amazing as you're already gonna beat with high numbers, so the Battle Door effect won't get you the most value, but in some situations where your opponent has a lot of PGs, this can help you by shredding their hand a bit better than usual. Then the last Coral support card is this great one, that's Electro Techno Fico, and her ability is act on Rigor Circle, cost counter plus one, and put this unit into your soul, and one of your units with Coral and card name gets power plus 15k until the end of turn. So this is for me a two star card as it's pretty wasteful for a counterblast. Yes, you put it into the soul so you can use it for your soul death skills, but I don't think that that's the counterblast worth for just 15k. I think the counterblast is better spent on Aurora Star Coral or maybe even Pian Ling or maybe even the Great Free support card as that at least gives you more consistency to the engine. This 15k power won't do really much with all the extra force markers you have and also the extra power that your grade 2 and grade 3 coral already can generate inherently so yeah this is not the best support card coral could wish for now it's on to the final vr archetype from this set and that is top idol riviere and this is the talk of the talk of the set, as her abilities are auto Vanguard Circle, one place, cost counter plus one, and discard a card from hand, and draw two cards. So it's a direct plus one with the counter plus, only with the discard you basically are searching for cards. What are you specifically searching for? Well, that's her second ability, as that's auto Vanguard Circle, at the end of the battle it attacked, cost, discard two cards from your hand, right up to one card with Riviera in its card name from your hand as stand and that unit gets drive minus one until the end of turn. So this card is definitely in my opinion um, six stars because it basically is a raging form in standard that can keep going and going and going <laughs> because it doesn't matter if your opponent is at grade two if you have four of these cards in your hand you're going to go off and if you have one or two counter blasts you can negate the minuses that you're making as on right you can then use your first ability to draw some cards back to hand and then keep going as this cycle is progressing and with the support cards you can support this quite 
quite consistently with extra draws or searches or that kind of stuff. So this is a very scary deck as if it high rolls, it high rolls. As every time you write, you also going to get that force marker, which makes your attack stronger and stronger and stronger, meaning defensive triggers won't do much in a lot of cases. So yeah, very scary card. And it's empowered by a right chain as this grade two version, Super Idol Riviere, has the following abilities, act from hand. If your Vanguard is grade two, cast write this card. Draw a card and call two Mermaid Idol Rivieres, which is the grade one, from your soul to the rigor circle. So once you add grade two, doesn't matter if it's her or another grade two, you can write her and draw a card, which effectively is a cycle. So you're digging for your deck for your top idol Rivieres. And then if you have one or two copies of the grade one Riviere, you're forced to call them out. So if you have one, you call one. If you have two, you must call two. If you have none, you can call nothing. That's actually pretty nice. Because the grade 1 is a pretty good booster, which helps you with super aggressive early game on the grade 2 turn, which forces your opponent either to take extra damage or force a lot of guard from them. And then if you go into the grade 3 multi tech combo, you probably are sealing the deal. But it doesn't end there, as she also has a second ability, as is auto and rigor circle once per turn. When your vanguard with Riviere in its card name is placed, you may stand this unit. So you can now also multi-attack on top of that your finger is multi-attacking because somewhere along the line where you're kind of rewrite, you can activate this card that's on the rear guard circle and stand it. So you can even multi-attack with your rear guards as well as your vanguards. So yeah, that's really scary. So for that, I think it's a solid four star card as the reset is nice, but I think the most value lies in the fact that you can rewrite it and then cycle it. And the restand is only as strong as the amount of force markers you can dedicate onto the rigor circle as just a 10k unit on its own. If you're lucky with triggers, then it's a different story, but in most cases it's not the restand that makes this card insane. Then for the grade one from the Riviere right chain, we've got Mermaid Idol Riviere, and her abilities are act from hand, cast Soulless One and write this card on grade one. Look at the seven cards from the top of your deck, reveal up to one card with Riviere and its card name from among them, and put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. If Bermuda Triangle Cadet Riviere was soul blasted for this cost, draw a card. So this, unlike the Coral Grade 1, can be an active plus one the first time you use it, as you're already going to draw a card for, uh, by the fact that you Soul Blast in the starter, but then also you have a potential of getting a top seven search. So if you hit that search, it's a cycle, but you get the plus one from the Soul Blast. And that's pretty good as it searches you to either the Grade 2 as a right target, it searches you potentially to the Grade 3, which you need for the superior right combo, or it can search you to another copy of the Great One, which means you can use it again. And if you do that, you have two copies of Mermaid Idol Riviere in the Soul. So once you write up to the Great Two version, you can call them both to the Rearguard column. And the reason why that's good is because of her second ability, as that's continuous or Rearguard Circle. If this unit's in the back row, this unit gets power plus 2k. So it's a solid 10k booster, which makes your columns 20k with the Great Two or 18k. And, that are, and those are magic numbers during the time if you go first or second and you're up against a Great One or a Great Two unit, which is pretty significant to push for gain if you want to get them as high damage as possible if you go into the Great Three multi superior right combo. So for that, because it's a super solid searcher and it's synergized with the Great Two and the Great Three, it's such a good way. I think this is a solid five star card as this. If you can hit this thing off, it's going to make changes. The only downside to this card is that the window of opportunity is very small, but the payout is potentially super big. Then if we go over the support cards for Riviere, then we got this great free that is animated routing Marjan. And Marjan's ability is act from hand. If your vanguard is top idle Riviere, cost discard, discard, draw a card, and put a card from the drop zone into your soul. If the card with Riviere and its card name was put, return this card to your hand. This ability may only be used by a card from the same card name once a turn. So this can help you fetch those grade three or even the grade two or grade one Rivieres from your drop zone back into your hand. So you can basically get another way of getting more superior rights off with your grade three ability, even after you already did a couple of rights and you just soul blast them into the drop zone. And it's a cycle card on its own, which helps you dig deeper through your deck for your top idle Riviere. So this is an excellent support card for the whole engine. And that's why I think it's a solid five star card as it's free. You just trade this card off for another card and potentially get another card in your hand, 
which is a specific card that you need. It's a plus one for free. That's insane value that not a lot of decks are granted to them, let alone one of the best decks in a specific set. Then another two, grade two support card for Riviere, we got this one that's Scramble Red Aland, and her ability is Auto Rigor Circle. When your Vanguard with Riviere and its card name is placed, this unit gets power plus 10k until the end of turn. This is a solid three star card as it synergizes really well with the grade two Riviere, but also the grade three Riviere as with the grade two, you can go into main phase, superior right one or two times, give this one extra power. So your grade two turn becomes pretty deadly. But when you go into grade three, every time you do the superior right, this thing will get an extra 10K. You also have the force marker, which gives another unit constantly extra 10K, which means defensive triggers are completely shut off for that for that turn as it doesn't matter for you as you just gaining the same amount of power each and every single time you attack with the Vanguard, which is nuts to think about. So that's why I think it's a solid three star card as it synergizes really well with what Riviere is trying to do. Then for the final support card, we've got this great one that helps with the resource problems and that is Lofty's Peer FG. And FG's ability is on a regular circle. When your Vanguard with Riviere and his card name is placed, if you have one or less face up cards in your damage zone, cost, retire this unit, draw a card, and counter charge one. So this can help you to extend mid combo to even longer combos, as when you are running out of counter blasts to keep drawing extra cards to dig deeper through your deck, you can activate this card, even dig deeper through your deck, and get that counter charge off, which allows you to use the on place counter blast skill of Riviere and once again, which is big. And you can do this mid combo, so you can boost with it in one turn and then sack it off later that maybe one or two Vanguard attacks when you actually need the, those extra resources. So for that, I think it's a solid four star card as it's one of those counter chargers, which actually are pretty useful in the respective archetype, like the unlike the other counter chargers within Bermuda Triangle, which are typically very awkward to use. Now with the main archetypes out of the way, let's take a look at the new melody cards that are trying to support the melody deck from the previous primary melody set. And they all got a grade two counterpart. And we start off with Sonata, which is from colorful pastrel Sonata. And her ability is melody, Continues on Vanguard the Rigor Circle. During the battle, it attacked a Vanguard. This unit gets power plus 5k. This is shared by all of your units with Melody. So Sonata is going to be the only one with an actual Melody skill. So the other ones are going to be a lot worse off than you think. This, on the other hand, is in my opinion a 4-star card. As it helps the Melody deck to have some more early game aggression on turn 2. To beat a little bit harder than usual. And... It's another one that can give a little bit more power onto the board. Sadly, it's only for the front row, so it's similar to how Caro only gives power to the one that's boosting in the back row. But at least it gives the deck a bit more early game power potential than what was granted to them with only the grade 3 counterparts. Then the following melody card is from Colorful Pastrel Cannon, and she got the generic melody keyword. But her own skill is Auto Rigged Circle, when placed, Soul Church 1, if you have a Vanguard with melody... Until the end of turn, when your opponent would call from his or her hand to the Guardian Circle for the battle, this unit attacked, he or she must call two or more at the same time. So it's an on-play Soldier's 1, which is not really useful in most decks, but in the Melody specific deck, it then gets the Battle Door effect. Only this specific card. That's not great. It's only one star, as we already have a way to get the Guardian Stick onto the board with the Great Free Melody, but it gives it to everything. This on its own isn't really great, and the fact that it's not a Melody effect is pretty mediocre at best. This is not gonna see play at all. Then the third one is from Colorful Pastrail, Serena. And once again, she has the Melody keyword, but her own ability is Auto Vanguard to Rigor Circle. When it attack, hits a Vanguard. If your hand has four or less cards, draw a card. So I'm gonna give this one two stars as yet again, it's not really ideal, but it has some utility to it as it can give all Bermuda decks a potential way of getting a bit more free draw power with the unhit if you went aggressive or super defensive or you need a bit more cards in its late game where you're running out of cards. There is way to use this effect in some regard. But besides that, it doesn't really help most decks and especially not Melody in their own right. So yeah, that's why I'm only two stars. Then the fourth one is from Colorful Pastrel, Fina. And once again, she has the Melody keyword, but her own ability is... Continuous on Guardian Circle. If you have a Vanguard with Melody, this unit gets shield plus 10k. One star. 
It doesn't do anything outside a melody deck, but even in a melody deck, it doesn't really do anything. She's basically a 15k shield in a, mel in a melody deck. That's it. And if you combine it with the great free Vina, then it can become a 25k shield melody card, but that's about it. And you need to intercept if you want to get that extra shield value. Then the fifth one and the last one of the melody cards, and ironically, it's not going to be played in melody, but it's one of the best cards in this set, is from Colorful Pastrail, Carol. And her abilities are, she has the melody keyword, but that's basically in, in, irrelevant, as her main ability is auto regular circle, when placed from hand, cost soul dash 2, Search your deck up to one card with the same card name as your Great Free Vanguard, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. This ability may only be used by a card with the same card name once a turn. So this can copy your Vanguard for two souls. That's insane, as it can copy for Melody, the Great Free Melody Vanguard, so like something like Sonata. That's what I think they went for, but if you already have paying attention with this video... Pacifica Coral and Rivier can abuse the hell out of this card. So yeah, this is a 5 star card for all the wrong reasons, as it has nothing really to do with Melody. It's all because of Rivier, Coral and Pacifica, and mainly Rivier. So yeah, this card is insane, and the value of this card if you pull it is nuts. It's one of the most expensive triple R's at this point. Now with the archetype support out of the way, let's dive into the generic cards. And this is going to be really rapid fire as most of the effects are pretty throwaway of, or just super random. And we start off with this red one that is prominent personality terminer and her ability is continuous in hand. It, you may remove this card and a card from your soul instead of two cards from your hand from the cards removed for G assist. So basically if you need the G assist and you have this thing in your hand, you can go this remove this card and a card from your soul, which is in, instead of a minus two, a minus one for G assisting. This card at best was funny but useless. But with the introduction of shield ticket, this card is basically dead in all fronts because getting the shield ticket is basically doing what this card does, but on a more consistent basis, as you don't have to draw into this thing. So yeah, one star. It ain't gonna be used at all. Then next up we've got this grade 2 that's Ridley, Mysteria, Luven. And her abilities are continuous and regular circle. This unit gets power plus 2k for each face down card in your damage zone. So it can be a pretty okay attacker during the late stage of the game. As it can be 20k for free. Then her second ability is auto regular circle. When the attack hits a vanguard, if all of the cards in your damage zone are face down, sold as 2 any number of times and counter charge 1 for each time. This is pretty significant as... That can mean a lot of counter charge and in some shape or form can be very, very important or deadly. Currently, it doesn't really have any use as we are as we don't have a deck that soul charges a lot and it needs to counter blast. The only thing that can come to mind is Coral, but Coral rather wants to use it for other means. So it's not really going to find its place in that deck. So for that, I'm only going to give it two stars. This is not really useful right now, but don't underestimate this card because this card is in a clan that has a great free that can just force on hit effects to activate so don't forget about this card once we get something that might interact with this really well and then another great one support card that's really nice for sp specific lists is silent adore sola and her ability is continuous record circle all of your records with the same card name as your vanguard gets boost and cannot be chosen by your opponent's card effects this is perfect for something like melody as it's another way to give your units boost but it also is great for Pacifica, as you want to call all those Pacifica to the field, and giving them resist makes it really annoying for your opponent to deal with. And even if they manage to get away with them, you can just get them back to the field with all your with all, all your many recursion cards. And for Melody, it's also nice to give them some more staying power. Also, this could interact with Coral in some way, if you can get those Coral great freeze and then get them into the uh, back row. Could be something, but I don't think it's that useful. But this set also provides us with a very interesting Great Free, which we're going to go into in a second, which ha can basically run an entire deck of Great Freeze, so we can use this ability also in that build. For this, I'm gonna give it three stars, as Bermuda Triangle is all about using Great Freeze, so it will have some use to it in some shape or form. Then another support card that works for Soul Blasting uh, decks, and that's Mini Mini Sparkle Param, and their ability is continuous or regular circle. If you soul blast a total of two cards or more this turn, this unit gets power plus 10k. So for Coral, this is excellent as you're going to soul blast a lot. But this can even be used 
in a lot of other decks. I mean, Carol uses two soul. Combine this with Carol, and you have an increase of 10k onto the board for free. This is really nice as it doesn't cost you anything as it just profits off of abilities. So it has some nice interactions with that. So I'm going to give it three stars as there, this could just be splashed in a lot of different decks that use the soul in some capacity. Then next up we've got this great 2 that's Fleeting Memoria Actiana and her ability is Continuous of Regular Circle. This one gets power plus 3k for each of your Vanguard's great. So this is mainly for the Highlander and the Great Free builds, where it gets a free plus 12k, making it a solid 22k attacker for free. But then we have the second ability in this auto regular circle. At the beginning of your right phase, retire this unit. So it won't stay on the board, so you need to intercept it away. So it's pretty awkward and limited in most builds, but with the new legendary idol rare, it makes sense to run this card. Overall, I'm only going to give it one star, as most builds cannot really use it, and... It doesn't really do anything. It's just a beat stick that cannot even stay on the board. So yeah, you don't even get the actual value of the beat stick. The next up, we've got a nice cycle card, which is this grade two, Charging AK Metre, and her ability is Auto Rigor Circle. At the end of the battle, it attacked, cost, count plus one, put this unit into the soul, draw a card, and one of the units get power plus 5k until the end of turn. So this is a nice cycle card. It gives, vel uh, gives soul, and it gives some extra power to the board. Overall, I think it's a 3-star card. The only downside is that's a 9k, but in the early game, it doesn't really matter all that much. And the extra 5k can help you pressure a bit more, and it removes itself from the field, which could be useful in a control-heavy meta. And the fact that you get the soul instead of it just outright retires it, can fuel other cards that are dependent on soul. So overall, a pretty nice consistency card or just an overall resource card that could be tagged in a lot of different decks. The next up we've got another very interesting grade 2 and that's this one, Tight Conductor Echoes and her ability is on a regular circle once per turn when your Vanguard is placed you may have this unit get power plus 5k until the end of turn making it the 13k unit. If that Vanguard is great for your greater cost soul bless free and draw two cards. This could be used in most builds, but it's mainly hinting towards Riviere as it is a once per turn. And Riviere can really use this ability as you don't really use Soul all that much, only for Caro. And then drawing two cards is what you want to hear as you want to dig through your deck to get the stop idol Riviere as fast as possible to keep rewriting. So for that, I'm going to give it three stars. It's a solid support card for Riviere, but it has some roots outside of Riviere as it can be used in a lot of different strategies. The next we get to a very interesting grade three that is gonna be the main focus of most budget builds for Bermuda for the coming while, and that's this one, Trouble Veridol Pressive. And her abilities are continuous. You may have up to 16 of this card in your deck. This is what I meant with the grade one that could make your grade three boost. But the reason why you want to have 16 copies is because of her second ability, Auto on Vanguard the Regular Circle, when it attacks or is attacked, reveal any number of trouble Veridol Pressive, so basically yourself, from your hand, and this unit gets power plus 1k until the end of the battle for each card revealed. So if you have a handful of these things, you can turn your Vanguard into a 22k unit or a 27k unit. That can be insane if you're up against an Exile clan that cannot really generate a lot of high-powered attacks. Something like Aggravane usually tend to hit around the 12 to 24 mark. This basically guards every of those stack for free. It's an interesting thing. Is it good? Nah, because you're running 16 great threes and you... It's gonna be really awkward. It's gonna be funny, but it's only a one star card. Is that You cannot really take this seriously. I, I, it's just for budget players. It's a fun thing that they can play with, but it's far from good. Now with the final cards, we're gonna take a look at grade four support cards and some cards for the Highlander build. And we start off with this grade one that is of Effable Wash, Tecla. And her ability is Auto Vanguard Circle. When placed, cost, reveal a grade four from your hand. Put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of the deck in any order. Draw the same number of cards as the number of cards put and shuffle your deck. So this is for me a free star card because it is a extra mulligan. And for a grade 4 deck, which is already typically inconsistent in some regards, this can be huge if you get this ability off. And also this could work for Highlander, which is even more inconsistent. The only downside is why it's just a generic 3-star card, is that 
You need to have this on your right target, and you need to have a Great Four. Which is similar to the Great One for the Hero Archetype from Nova Grappler, where you need to write the thing and then show your main VR. This is basically the same, only even less consistent. But the payout is way more, as the extra mulligan can be huge if you if you get it off. Now next up we've got this great free, this Bubble Dream Parisia, and her abilities on her finger to Rigged Circle, when placed, cast discard a card from your hand, draw a card, so just outright a cycle. And if you discard a grade 4 for this cost, this unit gets power plus 10k, critical plus 1, until the end of turn. So in a deck that is a bit inconsistent, if you get a hand flooded with grade 4, with this great free, you can get some more value out of that as it becomes a 23k column with a crit, which is always good. The only downside it is, it doesn't have a marker, which makes it a little bit awkward, but overall I think it's a two star card as it helps the great four type of decks with a bit more pressure and it gives you those great fours a bit more value if you have uh, an overload of those cards in your hand and you cannot really do anything with them anymore. This card allows you to get some extra value out of those cards. Now we get to an interesting duo, as these cards are 100% Highlander support, but they can be tagged into other builds as well, and that is Pearl Sister Perla. And this grade 2 has ability continues, you may only have one of this card in your deck, so a limit of one copy. And her unique ability is continues a record circle, all of your Pearl Sister Perla on the record circle get power plus 20k and critical plus 1. So... Outright, I'm gonna give it one star, but I'm going to get in that once we talk about the other card. That is the Great One counterpart, that is Pearl Sister Perle, and her ability is identical as she has Continuous. You may only have one of this card in your deck, and she has the ability Continuous on Rigged Circle. All of your Pearl Sister Perla on the Rigged Circle get power plus 80k and critical plus one. So basically, you have them both on the field, and you have two attacks that are 28k with two crit. Sounds nice, because it doesn't cost you anything, but you are forced to run only one copy of both. Which makes it super inconsistent. And that's why I can only give them one star, as it's pure Highlander build uh, support. Or just, if you have two slots open in your generic list, like, yeah, I can just throw it in, just in case. But overall, it's not ideal. Not ideal at, at a long shot. But the reason why these cards are made and what you can give them some consistency to some retrospect is thanks to this great free. That is Silver Singer Q Tire. And her ability is Auto Vanguard the Rigged Circle. When placed, you may declare card name other than this card. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your deck until you reveal the declared card or a normal unit with the same card name as a card revealed with this effect. Put the declared normal units from among them into your hand and shuffle your deck. So basically how this card works is you declare a normal unit, not a trigger unit, a normal unit, and you keep digging. And until you see it, you fetch it. But if you see a duplicate of two cards, or you have for some reason have a trigger unit with the same name as a normal unit, once you see that, you stop searching and you don't fetch the card that you need. So it basically is fetch an anything card or a get out of free jail card. This is a 5 star card, as it's a get out of free jail card in some scenarios, because if you top deck this card, this could potentially be a top deck of the card that you need to win the game, unless you need a right target, but that's besides that. So this is pretty major, but also it makes Highlander builds all the more consistent, as if you run a lot of one-offs, this card can just fetch the card that you need, just like the Pearl Sisters, that we just talked about, because if you have already one of the Pearl Sisters in hand or on the field, you can use this ability to fetch the other one. And in a Highlander build, you're most likely are going to hit that. So it makes those deck all the more consistent. Also, because it's a Vanguard Rigard Circle skill, if you write this in a Highlander build, you have Great Force, but you don't have them in hand, you can just call out the Great Force that you want to write next turn, fetch it, and then be safe for next turn. So this has a lot of options to it. And it can even have some ways outside of Highlander as it can fetch you anything. If you have room to just put it into your build, you can just throw it in, even if though your build might be a lot of four offs and three offs. If you just get this thing and you're combo heavy and you need a specific card, just slam it down, call it and see if you're lucky enough. It's a whole lot of better than a card that doesn't do that if you don't have the draw engine or ways to get to it on a consistent basis. So. This card has a lot of options to it, a lot of potential, and is just insane. The fact that Bermuda Triangle gets a card like this is nuts. In any other card game, something like this is 
so powerful if if combined with the right supporting deck and we might get the cards that we need especially if Bermuda Triangle is going to get twice a year support now then this thing could power out of control very quickly so yeah one of the most one of my most favorite cards of this set Silver Singer Q Tire is pretty good. But now we finally arrive to the end of the video as we go over the poster girl of this set, the legendary idol herself, Crystal Popstar Eve. And her abilities are act on Vanguard Circle, cause look at the top card of your deck and you may call the top card of your deck onto an open Vanguard Circle. So basically you look at the top card, you see a non-trigger, you call it. Do it again, non-trigger, call it. Do it again, non-trigger, call it. And basically get a free board. That's insane value. You get a free board for nothing. That's nuts. Not a lot of decks can say that. And then we have the second ability. And that makes its first ability, the fact that you can look first, even more insane. Because her second ability is continuous a finger circle. When your unit's power or critical would be increased by your trigger effects, double the value of that increase. So crit triggers become plus 20k to a unit and plus 2 crits to a unit. And all your other triggers are plus 20k to a unit. With the lock top card, then call it, look top card, then call it, you can just go go search for a couple of cards to see if you see a crit, then stop and go nuts. And this means your opponent is forced to guard your Vanguard attack at all times. And you swing it with three crits, most likely. If they no guard your Vanguard, it's almost GG at that point. As one crit, three damage. If you're lucky and you get double crit, five damage! So yeah, five stars, because this card can be its own deck, unlike the other great fours that are very Highlander-esque. This can be just in a generic su supporting deck that can abuse this ability, and you don't have to run one-offs. It can be used in Highlander because it's another great four, and that means another card that can be added into the list, and she's powerful enough on her own that can justify that. But the fact that you get so much value for free there's no cost on this card. No counter blast, no soul blast, no discard, no nothing. You get free units. You can even look at the top card of your deck. It's like, this is what multiple effects within Oracle Think Tank. But Oracle Think Tank needs to pay soul blast and counter blast for it. This card is just, eh, I'm just gonna look it. Oh, I'm gonna call it. Look it, oh, I'm gonna call it. Ah, oh, trigger, keep it. Attack. Double crit, 20k to Vanguard. Or Rearguard, whatever. Yeah, five stars. I cannot argue about that part and neither should you. <laughs> so we finally reached the end of the video. We've seen a lot of support cards for Bermuda Triangle, a lot of different archetypes. We see the new Riviera deck, the new Coral deck, the new Pacifica deck, upgrades for the Melody deck, even upgrades for the Highlander build. We even see more specific grade four support, which can make them a unique deck. And we have overall generic support with also finally a budget friendly alternative for Bermuda Triangle, which isn't just outright trash or isn't Highlander with only the low end value cards. Because with this new grade three, Pressif, that can run 16 copies of itself, you can do some really funny shenanigan plays. And that's definitely gonna be features on the channel. So, yeah, Bermuda Triangle got a lot of support and a lot of crazy support once again. And there is a reason why people are. Fearing the rise of Riviera, which is funny because well, once this set was announced People were scared of Melody because obvious reasons, but also because the set was called Crystal Melody, but now Melody is falling out of favor and it's all about Riviera. So yeah, but now I want to know what you guys think about these cards Let me know in the comments down below all your opinions and thoughts about the separate cards in this set Which cards do you think are insane? Which cards do you think are pretty mediocre? Do you think I overrated certain cards or undervalued certain cards? Let me know all your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below and let the discussion going As always guys, this video has been brought to you by our lovely patrons over patreon.com slash Vanguard Insider You guys are amazing if you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, then head over to Patreon.com, says Vanguard Insider, and become a Patreon today. I don't know if I successfully made this video under one hour, but I missed the time leap, and I'm tired, and I see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Thank God this video is done!